we are here tonight to focus on, uh, to meditate upon, and to worship Jesus. I want to remind you, I want to help you to remember all that Christ has done for you. We're going to do tonight what, what Scripture calls us to do when uh, the writer of Hebrews says that we are to fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame. You know, you and I, we were literally made to worship Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, Paul reminds us of this. He says this, he says, by him, speaking of Jesus, by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. We were created for him. We were designed to have Jesus be our focal point, to be the, the, the center of our attention. That's really what worship is, isn't it? We worship him because he is our creator. He designed us, and he breathed life into us. And we worship him because he's holy. Hebrews chapter 7, there the writer of Hebrews says this about Jesus and only Jesus, that he is holy and blameless, that he is pure, that he is set apart from sinners, and he is exalted. Oh, so how, how very much unlike us, huh? He is sinless, without fault literally and truly perfect. Jesus and only Jesus is worthy of our devotion and our admiration. And more than anything else, he is worthy and he alone is worthy of our worship. And especially on this day, because of what it is that we are remembering that he did for us as our Savior and as our Redeemer, he's worthy of our worship. Jesus, though he was perfectly innocent, yet he died. He, he died to pay the penalty for my sin and for yours. He wasn't obligated to do it, yet because of his great love for us, for me, for you, he gave his life in exchange for ours. He gave himself to be our sacrifice. Peter reminds us, of what it was all about, 1 Peter chapter 3. He says there, Christ died for sins. Once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. To bring you to God. What Jesus did, all that he endured that day, that, that was for me. That was for you. Understand this, from the very beginning, this was God's plan. It was God's plan for Jesus to die in our place. It was God's plan for him to, to bear the guilt for our sin. It was God's plan for the Savior to take my punishment, my punishment for my rebellion. It's God's plan for Jesus to be your substitute to offer himself as a sacrifice in your place. 
The crucifixion was God's plan to purchase our forgiveness. That's the message of John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That verse means so much more when it's understood in the context of the cross. When it's seen in the light of what Christ did on our behalf. It means so much more when we see how it was that he bore our sin. We see the reality of the fact that he experienced the punishment that if justice was done, we deserved. We see how it was that he paid for our guilt. And why? So that we might be with him, so that we might have life for all eternity. Everything that Christ did, everything that, that we reflect on tonight, understand this. He was not obligated to do it. He wanted to. He wanted to. Because he loves you. The love of God is demonstrated. It, it is declared boldly from the cross. And then that should overwhelm and overjoy us. We should, we should be even more overwhelmed and overjoyed with, with what his death in our place purchased for us. Well, when we understand what the end result is, that should move us even more. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul says this. He says that Jesus died for us so that whether we are awake, speaking of those still living this life, or asleep, those who have passed into eternity, that we, along with him, might be raised up to live together with him. Christ went to the cross. He died so that we might live with him, with him. He desires for us to be with him for all eternity. You know, if you don't belong to Christ, I urge you, give yourself to him tonight. Surrender to him. He has paid the penalty for your sin. Turn to him. Surrender. Allow him to have that rightful place within your life and within your heart of being Lord and Savior. And then draw near. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. This God who is holy and righteous and pure and good desires us to draw near. Of course, we can't. Not when we are captive in our sin. Not when our hearts are in rebellion. That's why Christ went. That's why Christ died upon the cross, was to pay that penalty, to open that door so that we can come to him. Surrender yourself to him. The worship team's going to come back up. And we're going to let God's word speak to us and set the focus for the remainder of our time. Come on up, guys. We're going to let God's word to help us as we worship. We're going to let it recount for us the Savior's journey to the cross. And so as you hear the familiar story, 
Let it move you to worship. I'll read a little or worship a little. And in the midst of it, you will also have opportunity to celebrate communion. In your own time, just between you and the Lord, we've got a table set up here at the front and another at the back. And just during this time, you are welcome, if you belong to Christ, to come to the table, to take of the elements. The, the cups are nested one inside another. The bottom cup has a little nugget of bread. The top cup has the juice. And you can do what Jesus told his disciples to do, to partake of these elements as a reminder of the fact that he went to the cross on our behalf. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 this about communion. He says, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So now, let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one who for the joy set before him of redeeming us endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has now taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's worship him.